the rotor vapor is used in order to evaporate solvent at a low temperature. This is useful in order to isolate the product without causing it potential heat damage. Before beginning the evaporation process, it's good to know the pressure required for your solvent in order to evaporate at 40 degrees Celsius. On the hood, there is a handy guide that lists the most common solvents boiling points at this temperature. All glassware should be checked for damage or cracks and using improper glassware carries the risk of explosion. This includes the collection flask, the trap, and the round bottom glass being used. The solution that is to be evaporated should then be placed in a round bottom flask. It is important to make sure that the volume of the solution does not exceed half the flask's volume. It is preferable to size up. This is done in order to ensure that the solution will not spill into the water bath when placed onto the trap and make it less likely for your compound to get bumped into the rotor vapor. Not only will your yield suffer, but the system will be contaminated. The water bath is filled with ionized water. ...components that need to be set up before the process can start. These are the cooling, pump, pressure, heating of the water bath, and the rotation. The cooling system is the first thing you turn on and the last thing you turn off. It consists of tubes that run from the faucet to the rotor vapor and then run into the basin. The cooling is imperative for the function and safety of the device. The flow of the water through the system does not need to be forceful, yet it needs to be enough to keep a steady stream through. The gaseous solvent is cooled down and collected in the collection flask at the bottom. If this isn't done, it is possible that the gas will travel to the pump via the tubes and condense there, causing damage to the device. This device has an automatic pump, meaning that once the start button is pressed, it will activate by itself. Some rotor vapors have water pumps that create the pressure, and it is important when working with those to turn the tap on as far as it will go, in order to create the most pressure for the rotor vapor. But again, this is not necessary for this device as it will turn the pump on automatically. The pressure is created via the pump once the start button is pressed. The pressure should never be turned on if the system is closed. The system is closed if the glass pin is facing you. This rotor vapor has two settings for evaporating solvents, manual and continuous. Manual. A pre-selected pressure is chosen and logged into the rotor vapor, and it will attempt to achieve that pressure rapidly. This increases likelihood of bumping of both the solvent and the product into the trap, as well as the rotor vapor, and has a negative impact on the yield of the product as well as potentially contaminating the rotor vapor. The preferred and recommended method is the continuous method. Continuous is where the continuous button is pressed instead of the start button and the rotor vapor lowers the pressure steadily in order to achieve the lowest pressure it can attain. There is a much lower chance of losing product this way and is better for the device. Therefore, this method is used and recommended. Make sure that all the solution in the flask is submerged in the water. Rotating the solution is important so that it will heat and evaporate evenly. Using the rotation greatly improves the heat transfer coefficient and increases the surface area the solution has. A study published by Bushi shows that increased rotation equals increased evaporation, but it is advised not to exceed a speed of 250 rounds per minute due to an increased likelihood of mechanical failure. The trap is used in order to minimize product loss 
as the product that gets bumped into the trap can be rinsed out and back into the round bottom flask. The cooling system is turned on. The temperature of the water bath is checked. The trap is placed using a clamp. The round bottom flask is placed using a clamp. Rotation is activated. Flask is lowered into the water bath. Press the continuous button. The system is closed. Evaporation commences through the lowered pressure and thus the lowered boiling point of the solvent. Lift the flask out of the water bath. Turn off the rotation. Press the stop button. This will increase some of the pressure in the system via the pump. Open the system in order to release the rest of the pressure. Remove the clamp and the flask from the rotavapor. Stop the cooling system by turning off the tap. Make sure to remove the collection flask and pour its contents into the proper sorting. Container B is for solvents containing halogens and H is for solvents that do not. A more thorough guide can be found near the exit of the lab.